This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Keith Butler Ministries. Today on Live Your Faith. And so the Holy Spirit will teach you how to talk. The Holy Spirit, if listened to, will teach you what to say with whatever situation you face, which then can release the power and the demonstration and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit inside of whatever you are facing. And I'm here to tell you, there is no power on the face of the earth strong enough to resist the power of the Holy Spirit. Seeking to reach every continent with the Word of God, Bishop Keith Butler is teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. And now, here with today's teaching, Bishop Keith Butler. We've been ministering on visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations of the Spirit. Praise God. We've learned a lot about it already. Not only have we been learn, learning a lot about it, we've been, we've been seeing it. Praise God. We've been seeing manifestations, demonstrations of healing of the Spirit, and other testimonies that are coming in. I'll read you some other ones later on today. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord said is, is the accent point of this year. Thank you, Jesus. We found out, praise God, as we studied the book of Acts, there is a pattern to that. Amen. We found the pattern was, first of all, they were involved in particularly united prayer, especially united prayer. As a group, they were, invited, they were involved in prayer. And when we had prayer night here last month, that's when it started happening. Amen. Been going ever since. Are you listening to me? Amen. We also found out that they were in one accord. We see this again and again and again. One accord, one accord, one accord, one accord. So they're operating in unity, praise God. We saw that there was some boldness that was exercised, amen. Because when the Lord speaks, there's obedience there. So then obedience is involved with boldness is involved in that, we've seen. Praise God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. And we see this pattern throughout, praise God. And there was one other thing that we saw. We saw that there was an expectation People expect it. Now, see, you don't know what's going to happen here on Sunday. Amen. Right? Amen. That's good to come to church. You don't know. You don't know for sure what the world's going to happen that day. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? Because now you're open to the Holy Ghost. And when you're open to the Spirit, praise God, you allow the Spirit to move. You have to make room for the Holy Ghost. I said last Sunday... Two years ago or so, the Lord said to me, he said, my church, he's talking about the body of Christ, my church has limited me, he said. They have shortened their services, they have shortened their messages for convenience and, and after the flesh's sake, and they have limited my manifestation to them. Are you listening to me? God requires at least as much time as you give Beyonce. And wherever, wherever else you go to movies. Are you listening to me? All right, praise God. So now, amen. As we begin to, to look at this text, let's look at Mark chapter 3. We read this text last week. <clears throat> In verse 24, Jesus is speaking. If you have a red letter edition, he, you know he is. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Cannot. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand, cannot. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot, cannot stand, but he has an end. And so we saw then, praise God, that the, the main way or first way that Satan comes against God's church to stop visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations, is to get the church to be divided, to divide it. Amen. In fact, there is a sign to your house if you're a believer. 
there's a sign to your church and every other church, a spirit of division. And that spirit of division's job is to stop those manifestations of God. Amen. Well, we see here, praise God, oftentimes people, people read this and they, they read, well, if you're going to enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, you got to buy a strong man. And they think, first of all, that that's, that strong man must be Satan and we bind him and spoil his goods. But it's actually the opposite of that. We are the strong man now. Amen. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And many other scriptures, we are the strong man. And how Satan binds us if with, is with division, particularly by magnifying our differences. Now today, we want to go further on that theme. And we want to minister today on the subject of defeating the spirit of division. Amen. Everybody say that with me. Defeating, defeating. the spirit of division. Praise God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's find out Holy Ghost strategies for defeating the spirit of division. I need three hallelujahs to get going this morning. Hallelujah. 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 That's like giving spinach to Popeye. Go over it. Amen. Defeating the spirit of division. Now, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, and indeed, I'm going to back up to verse 4. He says, And my speech and my preaching was not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. We know that, that Greek word demonstration also means manifestation. Manifestation of the Spirit and the power. Manifestation of the Spirit, I shared with you last week, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You have expressions or manifestations of the Spirit, particularly nine of them. You have three of them that reveal something, three of them that say something, three of them that do something. Praise God. Amen. And then you see that and power. Well, that word, Greek word for power, there is dunamis, miraculous ability. Praise God. Supernatural power. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. That's what that demonstration of the Spirit and the power. And the power, if you keep reading, you'll, you'll see, keep studying it through, is particularly to deal with casting out devils. Isn't it to me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now he goes on to say that, well, since these things are happening, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. See that word wisdom again? Verse 1, you're going to see that word wisdom, and you're going to see throughout this word wisdom. Underline that word wisdom. Praise God but that your faith not stand in the wisdom of men. See, there's the wisdom of men, then you got the next verse, but in the power of God. So you got a choice. There's the wisdom of men, man's way of thinking, doing, believing, accepting. And then there's the power, supernatural ability of God. Paul said, now, I didn't come to you with man's wisdom. I came to you with demonstration of the Spirit, and I came to you with power. Okay, Amen. So that your faith will stand in God's power, not in man's thinking and abilities. Okay, amen? Keep reading. He said, how be it, we speak wisdom, we speak among them that are perfect. This word perfect means those who are mature. Now, he's going to talk about maturity and immaturity throughout the next, this and next chapter. Amen. Because what allows the spirit of division to take hold and to be successful is that Christians operate as immature people. I know I wasn't getting too many amens, so I'm collecting my amens early in the message and store them up for when I need them later to encourage myself. Hallelujah. However, we speak wisdom among them that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, or age, actually, that word, nor of the princes of this world. Amen. That is not only Satan, but also those who are in charge running things in this age. That come to not. That come to not means 
The wisdom of this world and of this age is useless. But we speak, there's that word again, the wisdom of God in a mysterion. That's the word wisdom. Well, the word uh, mystery, rather. The word mystery means, or mystery is a secret. So we speak the wisdom of God in the secret, even the hidden wisdom. Well, praise God, the word hidden means something that is concealed away, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, praise God, this is Isaiah 64 and 4. Anytime you see, as I teach you how to study the Bible, Anytime you see it is written, you need to stop and then go find where it's written. And then go read the context, all of it, because where you are reading will only give you a part of the context now. So you need to go back and read all of it, which I'm not going to do today. But it's found in Isaiah 64 and 4. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed. Everyone say revealed. revealed. God has revealed. The word revealed here in the Greek means God has taken off the cover. Yeah. Amen. There was a cover over so you couldn't see it. And God has taken off the cover unto us by his spirit or by the Holy Spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. Praise God. What are we learning? We're learning that things of God can only be learned from the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's the things of the world. Its source of wisdom is different than the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God comes from the Holy Ghost. The very next verse says, For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him, even so... The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Well, the Spirit of man is in him. And now, if you are born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is in you. And since the Spirit of God is in you, he knows the things of God. Guess what? God's wisdom. God's things of manifestation and demonstration. He goes on to say, "Now Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And so only through the Holy Ghost can you learn those things which are freely given. The Holy Spirit is the source of all spiritual information. Now, when you read verse 13, it says, which things also we speak. Paul says, this is what comes out of my mouth. Words are important. Amen. Death and life, the scripture said in Proverbs 18, 21, and many other places, is in the power of the tongue. Matthew 12 tells us how God operates. Mark 11 tells us how God operates. God designed the system, praise God, so that Words coming out your mouth determines what happens in the world. Well, there's words that are words of man's wisdom. And then there's words which are from God's wisdom. He says here, praise God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Praise God. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And so the Holy Spirit will teach you how to talk. The Holy Spirit, if listened to, will teach you what to say with whatever situation you face, which then can release the power and the demonstration and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit inside of whatever you are facing. And I'm here to tell you, there is no power on the face of the earth strong enough to resist the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Oh, glory to God. He said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. N neither can he know them, because they are spiritually understood. Word discerned. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the only way you can understand the things of the wisdom of God is that you have to be out of the flesh and over into the spirit. Otherwise, it's stupidity to you. Otherwise, it makes no sense to you. Otherwise, you can't see it. Uh, amen? And so you're trying to prevail on people, trying to get them to see a spiritual truth when they only, only are operating in the natural. They can't get it. Uh, isn't it in to me? Praise God. Well, let's keep, keep on going. But he that is spiritual, now when the word here, spiritual, and what he means by spiritual, he that is mature, See, he's talking about, we started off the first, first couple of verses here. He's talking about maturity. He that is spiritual or mature, judgeth, which means discerneth, or is able to see into all things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's in it. Yet he himself is judged or discerned of no man. For who have known the mind of the anointed one, praise God, the supreme authority or Lord, that he might instruct him, but we have, say we have, we have. say we have, we have, we have the mind of the anointed one and his anointing. Now he's talking about the individual, praise God, that is mature spiritually, has the mind of the Holy Ghost, has been taught of the Holy Ghost, what to say, has been taught by the Holy Spirit how to govern their words and mouth. And there's a reason why you got this emphasis on the Holy Spirit teaching you about your mouth because the mouth is the first way in which the spirit of division utilizes his ability to stop the power through the mouths of people. Division happens, first of all, through words. Now let's keep on going. Praise God. Praise God. And our brethren, Paul says, could not speak unto you as mature or as under spiritual, but as unto kernel. Now, now sarkikos is the Greek word for kernel. It means this, that which is pertaining to the flesh. Here are some of the synonym words that came along with this, that Greek word. Animal. Unregenerate fleshly. So he said, I couldn't speak unto you spiritual truths. I couldn't share with you the depth of the wisdom of God, but I have to speak to you as an individual that is ruled by the flesh is unregenerate, and that is fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ. Napikos is the word for babes, and the word babes means not speaking, an infant a simple-minded person, an immature Christian. This is what Paul said. Now, he's writing to a church we read last week. He's writing to a church that had all the spiritual gifts operative. So they had diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. They had prophecy. They had working of miracles. They had all kinds of stuff going on for a while, but it's going to stop. Amen. It's going to get less and less and less and less and less and less manifestation. Amen. And Paul, it's going to be because Paul's not going to be able to give them further depth in the spirit to begin to walk in the spirit because of what happened to them. Amen. Now, people tend to equate spiritual age and maturity like they do natural age and maturity. See, in natural age and maturity, you, you, can, you can get to be 25, and once you get 25 years of, years of age, you can't get back in your body and take it back in time 10 years and go back to be 15. See? So once you get to be grown physically, you are always physically grown. Now, I'm not talking about mentally or even emotionally. But I'm talking about physically. You are physically grown. And that's the way a lot of Christians think. They think once they become mature in God, that they are always mature. That is not true. The things of the Spirit are always a sliding scale. You can always go up and down. 
you can always go into more maturity and you can have been to a place where you were operating and were mature in God and you can stop doing the things or open yourself up to the things that create immaturity and you can slide right back from being 25 to 15. See, then this church had gotten to a place where it had maturity at one time, which is why they could have manifestations, demonstrations. Are you listening to me? Praise God. But over time, things happened in that church that made that church go back to where they started. Are you listening to me? Praise God. You need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And Paul tells us in the New Testament book of Romans how to be born again to receive Jesus. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if you will acknowledge with your mouth Jesus as a supreme authority and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the scripture says, thou shalt be saved. It reads, with the heart you believe unto right standing with God, and with the mouth acknowledgement is made unto salvation. And so I'm going to have you do that with me right now. Yeah, just bow your heads wherever you are. You want to be born again. Pray this with me out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, that's right, pray this with me out loud. In the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he's the Messiah. I believe he died for me on the cross, carried my sins for me, paid the price for me. I acknowledge him as my savior and as the master of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. I'm now born again. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is now your Lord, and we'll tell you what to do further from this in Jesus' name. The Word of God entered your spirit as you just received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the real you. Your spirit was born again. That means that you're now a new creation in Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This process started an immediate change in your spirit. However, to continue this process of change, you must put away your old habits and learn how to walk in your new life with God by starting your day with the Father in prayer. Just a simple prayer of praise and thanksgiving helps to build your fellowship with God. Thank Him for its love, confidence, patience, loving kindness, peace, healing power, safety from all dangers, mercy, wisdom, and guidance for this day. Be sure to take the time to read the Word of God daily. Just like your natural body needs food, your spirit man needs to be fed the Word of God. Also, please write to the address on your screen so we can send you this very important booklet called Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Finally, it's important that you also take the time to find a church home and have fellowship with other believers. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Overseas Missions Initiative. Praise God, it's Mission Sunday. And let me tell you, the support you've been giving us for our Mission Sunday has spawned a ministry that's reaching hundreds of thousands of people. I just received in our meetings that we just had here at our offices today uh, that our main site in Europe is almost over 400,000 people that we have or are ministering to praise the Lord around the world. Not to mention what we're doing in France, that's also several hundred thousand other more people. Then the meetings that we're doing in various nations, praise God. The books that we are, uh, have translated into other languages, other people are getting the word that way. Videos that are going, all this is happening because of your support. And we thank you for your mission support. Jesus said, go on to all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say just preach the gospel where you are. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we're being obedient unto God and you're being obedient unto God. And the end result is that we all will be rewarded by him for doing what he said. Thank you for your support in the name of Jesus. 
When you operate in the kingdom of God, et lorsque vous vivez dans le royaume de Dieu, you are a giver. Vous êtes un donneur. You walk in love. Vous marchez dans l'amour. You walk in faith. Vous marchez dans la foi. It's not about you. Et il ne s'agit pas de toi. It's about others. Il s'agit des autres. Where are we going to live? Saran, quand on va saran. What are we going to eat? Quello che mangeremo. How are we going to get there? Quello che come arriveremo. All these things. Tutte queste cose. Shall be added to you. Saranno sopraggiunte a te. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never try and put God in a box. Yes, Keith Butler Ministries is truly teaching the word, doing the work, and touching the world. The lives of many people are being changed dramatically through the works of Keith Butler Ministries. People who have never heard the message of faith preached are hungry for God's Word. They're experiencing the manifestation of Holy Ghost power as they dare to take God at His Word. How exciting to be a part of this! We invite you to become a partner with Keith Butler Ministries today as we work to fulfill the Lord's mandate to go into all nations and preach the Gospel. Your life will be richly blessed as God continues to manifest His blessings in your life. Join today. Was today's program a blessing to you? What you heard was only a part of this powerful message. You can order the entire service today on CD, DVD, MP3, or Caption DVD. Simply visit us anytime at our e-store online at www.keithbutler.org or call us at 1-888-909-9673. Order today for yourself, a family member, or a friend. And let the Word of God begin to work in your life right now. Praise God, it's almost time for the 2017 Word of Faith Convention this coming June. We have an outstanding lineup of speakers, praise the Lord. If you want to find out about the will of God for your life, you want to find out about the Word, you want to be involved in the flow of the Spirit, you don't want to miss this meeting. And we have an even special something for married people, praise God, that you'll get from Dr. Caroline Leaf as well. And so get, your, get ready to come, get your calendar set. Don't let anything get in the way. This is a special time for us around Word of Faith to really tank up on the Word for the back half of the year. In Jesus' mighty name. Get in on the outpouring of blessings. June 13th through the 17th at Word of Faith International Christian Center. Evergreen in Nine Mile in Southfield. It's the Word of Faith Convention and Faith Leaders Conference. Featuring Jerry Savelle. I have hope that I will finish my course with joy. Yeah. The devil fired his best shot and it didn't work. Right, amen. Also featuring Jesse and Kathy Duplantis, Bill Winston and Dr. Caroline Lee, hosted by Bishop Keith Butler. The 2017 Word of Faith Convention. Plus join all sessions including Pista School of the Bible each morning from 9 to 10, 15 a.m. with Bishop Keith Butler. To see it live online and for more information, go to wordoffaith.cc slash convention. This concludes our program. We'd like to thank our KBM partners and friends and thank you for watching.